flight. The sheer word conjures up excitement, anticipation, and exhilaration. Whether you're leaving the ground for the first time or have flown thousands of hours, the thrill of flight draws a smile on everyone's face. Over the last few years, safety has been extremely prevalent in the industry as well as public perception. Even on a student's first lesson, they may learn about the importance of making sure the aircraft is in a safe condition for a particular flight. Many times in life, and especially in aviation, when you've experienced something for the first time and it's got that initial thrill, the newness of it and the danger of it even sometimes can wear off and we forget just how dangerous flight can be if we don't watch out for hazards that impose a threat to our aviation. This can be demonstrated in anything from a mechanic not using proper data all the way to a pilot not using a checklist during a flight, both of which can cause serious incidents or accidents to aviation. But there's some other things in aviation that can also cause some significant issues that are outside of an aircraft. Social media itself actually imposes a major hazard for aviation. And you might be thinking, what hazard are you talking about? What are you talking about, social media and aviation? Well, I'd like to take an example of Trevor Jacob, and I actually want to play a clip here of what he said himself. People like probably won't even believe that, that I've done this kind of thing. Looked at myself in the mirror plenty of times and been like, what were you doing? So, much love? I wanted clout for, I wanted to get credit for. I've had a existential crisis <laughs> where I literally don't know what I'm doing with my life. You know, I felt like I'm just sinking and I'm in the deep end from all ends of my life and I have nowhere to go and I have no vision and no drive and no ambitions of anything in my life. So if you're out there and you're struggling to find purpose in your life, it's something that I've struggled with in the past um, quite extensively. bad things you know there's people that are doing bad things out there that are adding value to others but that's like a bad it's a bad thing so it's kind of like a a wheel that's reinforcing itself if you if you really see it for what it is i've done a bunch of stuff for a long time that was like pretty selfish like it's all about me 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 like Oh, well, I'm gonna make a bunch of money and then dip. There's plenty of arguments out there that are saying that he intentionally crashed his aircraft solely for the views that he got from it. And as of today, he's lost his license. The FAA has revoked his license to fly. So it has cost him, fortunately it wasn't in lives or in harm or damage to anything but the aircraft he ended up destroying, but it has cost him his license. But if a aspiring YouTuber sees that and they have these safety parameters for their own content that they're trying to create, even like myself. They might say, what can I do to push the envelope, to push the limit to create content that's going to draw more people in, that's going to be rewarded from the YouTube algorithm and allow me to get more subscribers. How many times have you seen or heard of someone in aviation trying to hot dog their flying and show off for either a friend or someone that they're trying to impress or maybe there's buddies on the ground so they're just buzzing their house or flying really fast across the surface of the airport. Things that we do as humans to try to gain the affection or the praise from others or even just out of sheer pride just trying to say, look, I can do this. Well, that very thing can be a huge danger for social media. Social media and aviation is huge because there's a lot of other factors when you go to record a flight, uh, when you're recording information and putting it out there for the public to see um, and making sure that information is accurate and correct. And there's just a ton of factors that can be involved when you set a camera up with an aircraft. Even the sheer fact that it's there, if the pilot is new at recording and and documenting his flights with a camera like for YouTube, there's a good chance that they're going to allow that camera to distract them. The fact that it's there recording them, they're going to do things differently than they would if they were by themselves. Whether that's good or bad, sometimes that can influence you to do things maybe more cautiously than you would originally versus doing them more relaxed. Jacob's situation is the amateur situation. 
the things that he did, uh, whether it was wear the parachute and uh, lose his engine in the flight and then completely jump out of the aircraft, that was all amateur planned and performed. The flip side of that coin is when a professional, whether that's an aerobatic performer or a flight team, uh, from anything down to like um, just somebody in their extra 300 out flying around at an air show all the way up to the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels and people that are even military grade aircraft performance. But there's a tendency for us to look at them and try to emulate what they do as amateurs. As of the release of this video, Red Bull is attempting an incredible feat that's honestly kind of insane. Two pilots are going to jump out of an aircraft, individual aircrafts, and attempt to jump into each other's aircraft. They're going to go up to 14,000 feet, put their aircraft in a nosedive, from that nosedive, they will each exit their aircraft and attempt to skydive into the other aircrafts. Now, there is a ton of planning that has gone behind this. And this isn't the first insane thing that Red Bull's done. Whether it was jumping without a parachute like they did several years ago or setting the skydiving world record from space like they did several years ago or even most recently when they flew an aircraft through a tunnel in Europe. They are constantly pushing the limits on aviation and recording doing it. And the danger for us as amateurs is to see that and say, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Because we don't see the hours and days and weeks that have gone into planning this attempted stunt, if you want to call it that. The other thing we don't see is the manpower. Red Bull has a ton of people in the background calculating, working on this, modifying those two Cessna 150s that are going to be used during the stunt today. The things that they have done to prep for this really have helped to mitigate a lot of the risks that can be involved. But the problem is, is not all the risk has been mitigated. There's still danger out there and they've calculated it. They have set their parameters. There's a degree at which if they're not in the aircraft, they're going to save their pilots and the aircraft will just be a loss. We don't have that as amateurs. We don't have the planning. We don't have the background of it. And you can get there, but you have to work through years of preparation, years of working with people who have way more experience in aerobatics than you or way more experience in skydiving than you to get to the point to where you can control an aircraft and do something that is impressive without taking the risk and the hazards that are involved with that. This video is not about Red Bull and it's not about Trevor Jacobs and his license that he's lost. This video is about safety. There will always be someone, whether it is a professional Red Bull team or a rising social media star, that is out there as the face of what we all do as amateurs and as just private pilots. But we should never allow that, whether it is someone who we don't see the safety precautions that they have planned or it's someone who has fame and has been found on social media, we should never allow either of those two factors to influence what we do as a compromise of safety. Safety should never be sacrificed on the altar of fame. Aviation is always going to be a thrilling industry and part of that thrill is knowing what to do when an emergency takes place. As of today, Red Bull is going to attempt this stunt, and I'll be watching it. I'm excited to see what happens. So I would challenge you today, if you've watched the Red Bull stunt, or maybe this is sometime in the future and you're just now finding this video, consider what are you doing to mitigate potential risks, and what are you doing to help others perceive the safety that you're trying to incorporate into each of your flights. I appreciate you watching this video. It's a little bit different than what I would normally do, but it was something that was on my mind and it's something that I've been really interested in watching the development with both Trevor, Jacob, as well as this Red Bull stunt. And it really, I think, highlighted the need to talk about civil aviation safety. I appreciate you watching it. Hope you have a good rest of your day.